Come with me, you're gonna see, and you listen audibly. It's the Guy in a Basement Podcast. All right, welcome to the Guy oh, in a Basement. Awesome. I like it. <laughs> Thank guy you. In podcast. The Guy in a Basement. You're really in a basement right now. <laughs> I miss literally, literally. That's the. <laughs> it's that's a little tongue in cheek. And there we go. <laughs> With me now is my guest, my friend Charlie. Hello, how you doing, buddy? Hello, I'm doing well. How, how, thank you for asking. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's been uh, I've been a little under the weather, but I'm doing good. I'm much better than I was yesterday. Oh, good. Much better. Much good. Better. Good. 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 That's great to hear. It's great to hear. Yep. Um. Wow. How have you? Oh, I mean, yeah. like. We already did the have you been's and such, but you know, uh, for the people, how, yeah. have you, how, how, how is Japan right now? For those of you who don't know, Charlie lives in Japan. That's right, yeah. Um, Japan right now is doing, I mean, I can't speak for the entire country, right? But um, in, in, in my experience in Japan right now, it's going good. I mean, the, the whole corona situation is, um, you know, calming down a bit. They are releasing um, the restrictions on um, having foreigners enter the country. And my job as um, an ALT advisor, that is an assistant language teacher advisor, um, specifically for the JET program, which has a lot of um, English teachers come from abroad to teach at uh, public Japanese schools. We are now having a lot of ALTs that weren't able to come in before because of Corona come in now. Mm -hmm. And so I've been very busy doing that. And, you know, so ha finally getting the, you know, wheels rolling and nice. having all these new ALTs come in and go to their schools and um, have the students starting to learn English again um, from a native speaker, it feels really refreshing, you know, to uh, be able to do that. That's wonderful. I'm happy to hear that, like, uh, things are kind of getting back to speed here. Um, yeah. How was, uh, you know, I mean, I was there, I was also there at the beginning of the uh, pandemic and the shutdown and everything, and then I left. Mm, I, I, actually yeah. ended, I actually ended up coming, I had to take a like a emergency trip to America right before it happened. And like, the, uh, I think it was, uh, th um, the second of March, 2020 when they shut down the country. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or the third. Like, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I flew, yeah. flew in the day before back into the really? country from the contract. <laughs> yeah. You literally just made it. Yes. Literally by the, oh my gosh. right by the nose. Like it was like, you're so close. We almost got you. You almost weren't allowed to come back. <laughs> I know, huh? Literally, because once you come in, all of a sudden there's a shutdown. Even if you wanted to go back, you couldn't, huh? Yeah, and my goodness, what a hassle! What a hassle! What a hassle! Did did you want to go back, but were you stuck in Japan? Is that what happened? No, no, no. Um, it's an entirely private affair. Um, I'd rather not say oh. on air. I mean, I can oh. certainly tell you about it after oh, the thing. Okay. No worries. Yeah, yeah. It's it just something, something family related. Oh, okay, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And I'm sorry you had to come to Japan in that environment, though, huh? Because yeah. you expect to, like, come to this country and then hopefully meet a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, and go out and see Japan, Yeah. maybe travel. Yeah. But then all of a sudden you can't do anything. You have to be inside. Yeah, very um, true, very true. Yeah. Yeah. What can you Dang. do, though? What I, can you do? What can you do? What can you do? Um, I, I'm curious, so you're doing... Um, you're working for a company, right? Yeah. Was Were working... you interacting with a lot of people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it was an Akaiwa, so many t many different people. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm curious, well, how did that change um, once Corona started? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I was, um, I guess we'll be talking about education in Japan now. That seems like a good topic yeah. for all of us. Uh, yeah. You being a uh, teacher in the public public schools and me being in a, in the private Akaiwa schools. Um, it was good. Uh, and, but it was rocky. Um, kind of, there was like a shutdown for like, you know, we started wearing masks and stuff, but then there was a standard shutdown, right? Remember when that happened? Like, I think in like May or maybe even yeah. like April, yeah. we stopped, like there was a week yeah. of no work. And then, um, yeah, they gave us all iPads. And we started it. we started printing out stuff and just doing digital lessons online, over oh. iPads, working from home, and that was. I see. Oh, you did the working from home. Yes, yeah. it's uh, wow. it was very bizarre. 
but it was also nice when you wouldn't have a class or a student want to come. <laughs> I'll be honest, mm. I'd just like turn on my, my Switch and I'd play play games for an hour and then wait to... Uh, now that yeah. I don't work there anymore, I can say uh, I wore like pajama pants with a suit on top. It was very much, very much if you're thinking of the image, except I was sitting on the floor because I didn't have like a desk. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you're not the only one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm positive. I'm positive. Um, yeah. How, how about uh, yourself, with you being in Jet for – how many years has it been you've been working with the program, if I might ask? This is my fourth year. I entered my fourth year on uh, August 5th or 6th. And, um, yeah, and after this I have one more year remaining um, because the max is five years. Right. It's been good. Um, um during that time that you were working at home, mm-hmm. uh, the public teachers, unfortunately, you know, because the public sector moves at a different pace than the private sector, right? Um, we weren't able to just do English lessons on tablets or online or anything right. at that time. Right. So there's a lot of ALTs just at home doing work from home, and they're just creating materials and so on. Uh-huh. But they weren't able to really interact or go to the schools, mm. except maybe once um, every week or so to just you know touch base and um uh, get data they need to create materials or print out materials or whatnot right right. and yeah so that's kind of how it was so it's interesting to hear that you're actually able to do the classes though um probably because you know the private sector has less restrictions on like what you can or can't do because they don't have to listen to the board of education all the time (laughs) yeah absolutely uh and that makes sense i mean we all i mean anyone who's lived in japan knows the, the the slow grind of Japanese bureaucracy. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if it's yeah. in your local city office where a lot of stuff happens. Like, local yeah. government is very important in Japanese society. Um, you, yeah. you go to your... You go to City Hall a lot for a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, the fact that you're working as um, in the office probably means you're working in City Hall, right? And wherever you're put. Oh, um, you work with I, I work in a in a different place that is not too far from City Hall, but we are in our own designated location, the mm-hmm. Board of Education, which all, with all of its divisions and uh-huh. uh, departments. And um, yeah, I, I work in the Curriculum Guidance Division in the Education Department, right? Uh, or the School Education Department, and yeah, so you know we we're separate, but um, it's still very bureaucratic um Mm -hmm. in the japanese sense yeah and yeah i don't have any complaints i mean uh, right now specifically because of the situation with corona finishing up and us usually we just have like two groups of ALTs come per year right and that's what everyone was accustomed to Mm -hmm. but you know people come in and go into the positions managing uh alt um, orientations and ex, uh, the trainings and so on mm-hmm. and so we have a lot of people who d- didn't even do it before corona do the regular um, orientation um, acceptance process when we had two groups of ALTs come per year so we don't even have like you know a basis to understand like how to do this from the beginning there are some senpais who know mm-hmm. but um, for the most part a lot of the supervisors aren't really aware but on top of that we're not even doing it like how we used to right like when we had two groups coming Uh because we had um, a whole group of LTs from last year 2020 and they're waiting for a whole year to come to Japan right a lot of people dropped off in the process because you can imagine putting your whole life on hold Hold. for a whole year some yeah like some people can't even do it like right. uh, financially speaking, right? Right. But those who could and were willing to wait, I'm being told like every few months or so, you're gonna probably be able to come at this time, but we don't know how you know the Corona situation will develop, so we can't guarantee anything. Right. You know, being told like every few months and thinking, oh, maybe I'll be able to go in a few months, but then being told again, I'll wait just a few more months. You can't have a steady job in that environment. Yeah. No. Um, not at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so these folks, they waited a whole year. And we have, but we already have 2021 acceptances as well. So now we have like two years worth of ALTs right. coming in over like a kind of a long period. 
Right. But on top of that, in in a Kobe, at least where I work, Kobe City, right. the, there's a change in the education system. So now they're having more ALTs come to the elementary schools. Okay. So yeah, now we have we have um, you know the increase of like uh, uh, number of ALTs uh, in general. At the uh -huh. same time, we're trying to recruit. Um, or I'd rather have ALTs come in uh, for over two years. So there's uh -huh. like, all the, for example, for example, let me make this more clear. Right. There, there is, there was around a hundred ALTs. Uh huh. Um, but now, now there's like two hundred. You understand? Really? So like double. That's a that's a massive yeah. jump. It's a massive wow. jump. And what what's even like normally we would be able to do this more gradually, mm -hmm. but but because we have like last year's number of ALTs and this year's number of ALTs all coming over one period it's just like bam you know like 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 around 100 ALTs like all coming over this period mm -hmm. with people who haven't even um, been accepting ALTs before who know how to like do that right so we had to kind of like you know uh, gain the knowledge from our senpais and like work out this whole process yeah. right. and then like do you know acceptances literally every week ALTs are coming we have like groups of five, one, two, twenty. Uh, every week is a different number of groups. We have to do the whole week training. We have to, you know, have them come in, get them into their apartments, explain how everything works, do the trainings, and um, get them situated at their schools while helping all those current ALTs with any problems they have. So it, it's a really wild time right now. There um, you go. I. Yeah, <sighs> that must be stressful to deal with that <laughs> sheer flux. Like that's a, that, it feels like a flood of people coming in to just like get stuff done. That's yeah, wild. yeah, it, exactly. It is literally a flood of people coming coming in every week, uh, meeting new faces, and you know, like the process of coming to Japan to start working um, is not simple. You know what I mean? Like no. it's a, it's a big change in your life. A lot of times, people are just finishing college, coming maybe living alone for the first time, yeah. or going to another country for the first time, doing a full job for the first time. There's a lot of first times that all happen too. Yes. So it's not it's not a simple process. I right? mean, with the very least, for both of us having, you know, you um, both of us studied abroad together back in 2017, I believe, and yeah. uh, then. Yeah. You did Jet, I think, in 2018 is when you went. If that is, correct. oh yeah, that's correct. Oh, thank you for remembering. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's that. Those are there's are there are your four years, um, and then for me, 2019. You know, both of us are fairly familiar with the immigration process. Uh, to Japan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's right. Yeah. It it takes at least four months. Yeah. That's a long investment it, of time, actually, to consider. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is a long investment time, and yeah, once you get here too, you know, there's still um, a whole whole other set of procedures you have to do to get situated. So it's not over um, with the immigration processes, right? Right. There's the whole living and and you you know that too. We have both been through that. The living and getting accustomed to the transportation system and what you can eat and whatnot. There's there's so much, isn't there? Yeah, it's. It's 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 rather. One cannot stress how. It's just it's a lot of investment of time. That's all I can say about it. It's just an investment of time. Yeah. It's just crazy, to think about. Um, yeah. And. Exactly. You know, if you can do it, kudos. Especially if you're first time <laughs> around. If you've done it once, you know it's not as hard, because you know what you're going. Yeah. Through. Just a certain different aspects like i imagine um a government sponsorship as opposed to like a private company sponsorship and if you like if you're working for a different company and that could be tech or that could be english education or you know customer service i know a lot yeah. of like uh people for like because i've you know where i lived um you know so you live in kobe that's a very international city mm -hmm. and you're in the osaka mm -hmm. like metropolitan area which Mm -hmm. I'm very like ah, oh, what a wonderful place to be. Born. That's gl that's glorious. <laughs> yeah, pretty lucky. It is yeah. a nice place. Yeah, you should come visit next time you're in Japan. <laughs> Definitely, I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm very much a Kansai guy. I love Kansai. Every time I've gone, I love it. Yeah, 
Oh really? Yeah. Well, what's your favorite part about Kansai? The food? It's well, it's very nice. I do like <laughs> the food. Don't get me wrong, but it just feels a lot more. It feels a little bit more laid back than Kanto is. Like Kanto mm-hmm. is very yeah. Like I love Kanto. I've lived in Kanto every time I've been <laughs> in Japan. Kanto's great, <laughs> but there's something like homey about uh, Kansai mm-hmm. that I just I can't explain it. Plus all the history, you know me, mm-hmm. I'm a history buff, so yeah. it's like there's so much more history there compared to Kanto, which mm-hmm. like, Kanto still has mm-hmm. 800, maybe even a thousand years of history. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Kansai has at least 2,000 years of history, if not more. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. That's right. We have Nara right over there, Kyoto right over there. Um, it's all within it, like it, you know, one train ride's distance. Absolutely, it's, it's a really nice place to live. Yeah, yeah, and the food too. Yeah, Kobe too is famous for um, for bread amongst you know, Kobe beef and other things. But I don't eat meat, so I particularly um, focus on the bread. There's a lot of great bread shops over here. Really. That sounds yeah. See, and that's wonderful. I like. I can't stress how nice that that, that seems. So it I have, is really nice. There you go. I have a friend who's uh, in our in my chat here. He's talking about this reminds him of studying abroad in Norway and the process of adjusting there. And strange that two oh. places so far away have some similarities. Is what he says. That is really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. In Norway, huh? Yeah, I, I wonder what those similarities are. I guess it's the oh, the studying abroad process. I'm sure there's a lot of similarities that come out. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure we'll hear more back from him in the chat. Um, by the way, if you want me to, oh, I can okay. send you the link to the uh, channel, and you can follow it live if you'd like. You can just turn it on silent. Oh, okay, sure, absolutely. Yeah, Let's let me see that. Thank let you. me send you that. <laughs> All right, we have another person coming in, so thank you very much as well for that. All right, let me send you that link really quick. I'll just pop it out. But nevertheless, let's uh, continue on. Um, yeah. So both of us has worked as, as educators in a foreign country. What do you, w- let's talk about that. I think that's an interesting experience, both yeah. since we both have the different angles of being, you know, me being Aikawa and you being the proper jet. You know, I think that'd be fun <laughs> as an ALT. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Like, what was that's it like? True. What was it like teaching the kids in your program? If I might mind, if, if I could ask. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a learning experience uh, more than anything, because um, you know, for one, I was never an official teacher. I don't have a teacher's license. I didn't study education in college. I just was accepted for this program. My main intention was to, well, yes, teach English, but also come to Japan and get in touch with my Japanese heritage because I'm half Japanese. And and so coming into Japan like that, I wasn't quite prepared to encounter what it was to be an ALT. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm teaching all these students right. and I'm supposed to, you know, be equipped to be this, um, you know, very effective English teacher. Right. And in the beginning, it was because I didn't know what I was doing, honestly. <laughs> I wasn't sure <laughs> how to, like, drag with the students, or, right. you know, how to teach English that well. I, there's all these trainings and resources, but it's different than actually being in the classroom, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but so the whole experience was a big learning process, I would say. But what was nice for sure was, um, you know, interact interacting with the students, and you know, I don't know. That was just probably the funnest part because you know, they they saw me as a different person, how I saw myself. Uh, right. They were, you know, looking at me as like this, you know, this American who speaks English, who um, I don't know, they have all these. You know, interesting ideas about like ah, oh, you know, he comes from a completely different culture. Um, I and you know the, I mean, there's uh, in my school a lot of people like the Beatles. There's one teacher who really liked the Beatles, and there's students who really like the Beatles, so they talk to me about the Beatles, um, even though I know they're not American. But, you know, they speak English, right? Um, so, you know, in America they they were pretty popular too. So, I don't know. It's it's like you know, it's cultural sharing. I was able to share my experience with the Beatles, let them know my favorite um, you know, band member, John Lennon, and then they would let me know their favorite. I think it was John Lennon, too, that one um, student who talked to me about it. But I don't know, just those little things, you know, talking to the students, getting to know each other. Yeah, that, that was pretty impressionable. 
that's see i love that because it's like yeah working with like fellow people that like they share interests that you didn't expect that's wonderful like uh, for example mm -hmm. um some of my coworkers, i i worked with a staff of mix of japanese and foreigners right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. each one of them i had something in common with like i love talking about manga and history with one of the japanese teachers i love talking yeah. about like old hollywood movies and like culture with like my australian coworker, going drinking uh, having a good time mm. of course drinking is a large part of japanese culture and <laughs> environment at the that's end of right. the day yeah. so you learn that's to right. enjoy a drink i've very much weakened coming back to america because i've tried to cut back a lot and that's helped with the weight loss but i've also lost my nice. my alcohol tolerance <laughs> you walk the nakdane, <laughs> i've become weak as they say <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> That's right, though, huh? They have the whole uh, drinking culture, too. At the end of events, like sports day or a culture festival, all the teachers would go out and drink together. They'd have a drinking party, before corona, that is. And that was fun, you know, to see people outside of the workplace and uh, trying to communicate um, with my limited Japanese, with their limited English. Um, but that was still really nice. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 bonding is what it is it's bonding yeah yeah no absolutely it is the bonding isn't it yeah so i guess out of the whole experience as being a teacher um yeah teaching was was also a big learning experience too but the bonding you know the relationships you develop along the way um mm. and looking back that those are some of the things that are you know more precious to me right absolutely the connections yeah. mm-hmm I the agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. My connections to my students, yeah, huh. my con like I would love to see my students. Yeah. I would love to see my coworkers. Like there's just something about it that's wonderful. So I I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. I have a question mm -hmm. for you from one of the uh, viewers. I don't know if you've uh, I sent you the link in the thing, but I don't know if you're you oh, okay. in the chat. Um, but they he, he, mm -hmm. he says uh, I'm curious if Japanese people uh, viewed or interact with foreigners with Japanese heritage or debt. Okay. Basically he's asking, do you think that people who are part Japanese, like not full Japanese, uh, -huh. uh yeah. that regular Japanese people interact with them differently than like full foreigners? Yes, I do think so. Um, and I think so. Um, specifically, specifically if they know that, right? Cause right. when they look at me, they, they didn't know that for the most part, they just thought I was American. Right. Uh, maybe I was mixed with like, some some other type of ethnicities right. but they don't know that until i tell them mm -hmm. and i don't know just because i'm like so like so american like i don't originally i didn't speak japanese i don't look too japanese like some people could tell like if i had a mask and walk around the city i right. think i'm japanese but but the students i don't know for the most part they all didn't know about my heritage so they treated me like i was not japanese right but there are other alts who have and it also relates to your name, right? Right. My name's Charles Spencer James. Right. That's like, a, super non-Japanese. That that's a very <laughs> American or English sounding name, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so very not Japanese at all. So right. just from the name, they wouldn't imagine that I have Japanese heritage, even right. though I'm, my mother's Japanese and I, I am half Japanese. Yeah, so um, I, I would receive different treatment than what I hear about how some of my more Asian counterparts uh, experience right. uh, being in Japan. Right. Um, the um, but it's hard to say, right? Because each of their situations are different, and I, I didn't live their situations, so I right. can't speak to them too accurately. But um, there 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 are like differences in the way people are treated based on how they look and um, yeah, uh, their names even. Yes. Um. Yeah, and you know there is a stereotype of like that, you know, white, blonde, blue-eyed white American who, um, you know is like in the textbooks and so on they're trying to change the textbooks so there's more diversity in them but yes that was kind of a more of a stereotype and also you know you'd have people just um think that oh that's the dreamy uh foreigner right and, uh, unfortunately you know that stereotype does have re repercussions um in a uh, you know in terms of how uh, different foreigners and alts are treated in japan yeah um yeah if, if you don't fit that stereotype the further you are from that stereotype to a degree um, you, you could be treated less well. Yeah. Um, that's definitely the unfortunately, case. Unfortunately, yeah. You know, they assume that probably, like, mm -hmm. 
Americans are tall. Americans are usually like have colored eyes. Um, usually mm-hmm. Caucasian yeah. of some sort. It's 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 mm-hmm. very bizarre yeah. because it's very kind of behind the times in terms of understanding. But I feel like this society is changing in a more proper direction. Yeah. And the fact that it's like switching even in like the yeah. governmental stuff, that's proof. In the private mm-hmm. sector education system, there's a lot of integration of uh, more diverse um, people. Uh, like mm-hmm. not every, not all of the foreigners are Americans. You know, there's Australians, there's New Zealanders, oh. there's British people, and a lot of them look different. You know, some have different skin tones good. and what have you. So it's like if I were to yeah, send you a good. textbook from the what we would te- what we would been teaching at uh, my company, it's definitely it seems like it's progressed. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. Yeah, and they, yeah, they are making those changes. Um, and you know, the ALTs now here in Kobe too are doing incredible work. There is this one ALT we have who uh, did a diversity workshop at um, our skills development conference, which was online. But she um, created this whole diversity workshop, and we had a. Uh, one of the people in uh, my office uh, who interpreted yes. for all the Japanese teachers who attended. Mm-hmm. Um, there was all the ALTs who were attending, as well as a lot of Japanese teachers of English who um, are rather official teachers of English. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of them are Japanese, I think, right. um, who were attending. And and this was like, I don't know, it might have been their first diversity training, at least in the context of um, the Board of Education this is their first official mm. diversity training, I-, I feel I can say. Right. And um, that, that was a big impact. This was literally just, um, I think, a month ago. Wait, no, this was, this is November. Yeah, we're still in November. Yeah, it was this month, earlier this month. So that, that was really a breath of fresh air. Absolutely. I that's That makes me happy yeah. here, that there's, like, there's efforts yeah. being put into it. Because that just shows the progression. Mm-hmm. Uh I mean, I would yeah, say absolutely. it's weird to think because, you know, you'd think Japan is pretty forward on this sort of thing, being like the only liberal democracy for the mo- well, official liberal democracy in Asia. Mm. Uh, but of course, mm. you have places such as you know, Taiwan, for example, or I guess the Philippines. Um, mm-hmm. Duterte doesn't seem like the most apt <laughs> of political leaders but i don't want to get into mm. politics unless you were up for it i'd rather stick to our topic <laughs> of japan and teaching uh, but we can certainly dive into that later <laughs> if you would like uh, i don't okay. know how intricate you are um yeah and no, i i feel like if that happens i would be doing more listening because i'm not so uh, informed about these matters <laughs> yeah, well that's <laughs> yeah i can make a joke or i can just be serious I... but i'd rather us continue our topic <laughs> yeah it's it seems like uh okay. It seems like things are getting better. It seemed from I'm for what I saw and what it sounds like you're saying. So that's good. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, things are getting better. There's still, you know, a lot of work to be done. Um, right. And it's hard to speak for the rest of the country as well because you know Kobe is a pretty internationalized city um, in comparison to a lot of Japan because of its you know historic significance and being a um, port town and also right. even currently now it still has a port. Yes. Um, and there's a lot of foreigners who live here. So, yeah, they're a little bit um, ahead of the curve, I think, on certain right. matters, including diversity. But, right. you know, even if we look at it from a perspective of American standards, it, it is quite behind. I mean, even if we look at America, too, it, like, depending on where you are, too, it varies, doesn't it? So, um, <sighs> yeah, so yeah, as someone yeah, who lives in such a place. There's a lot of such, work to be done. As someone who lives in such a place, there's, yes. Um, I currently live in yeah. Wyoming, and it's um mm-hmm. throw a rock there's gonna be a white hearse and hit upside the head that's all i can say <laughs> oh. i mean there are more cattle here than there are people it's basically like <laughs> it's like a conservative version of new zealand <laughs> except without po- positive <laughs> social democracy um anyway <laughs> um so I, another question just came in if I, i'll read it for you um oh that's, uh-huh. that's a funny comment too um after hearing about the hanging out, is it easy to make friends with Japanese people or is it specific to work with people that tend to be friendly? And then he says, here's Kobe thinks of the beef like a simpleton. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the beef is something everybody knows about when they come here. Um, in terms of yeah, making friends with Japanese folks, um, at least in my experience, um, well, as an ALT in a school, right? 
it's different right. than right now being at the Board of Education. But right. as an ALT in the school, um, there, there, there for me, there was someone who uh, would be more approachable and who would um, proactively come and talk to me. Yeah. Um, on several occasions, I was at a junior high school and an elementary school, mm -hmm. and yeah, there was usually always someone who would come and talk to me and who I would feel right. comfortable approaching, uh, if not several people. Um, and that was my situation. So I, I could be on the more lucky side. Um, right. For the most part, I think, you know, there is at least like one staff person who is more familiar with foreign culture or more interested and open to foreign culture or understand that it is hard for an ALT to be the only foreigner um, for the most part in the office, um, the teacher's office, um, and, you know, not having the ability to speak Japanese fluently, that it can be kind of isolating. So um, for me, there, there was that person who could um, approach me, but also right. in terms of making friends with Japanese folks in the context of a teacher's office in a public Japanese school, right. you can you can always approach others, even if you can't speak um, Japanese fluently, if they can't speak English fluently, and you can just kind of work some kind of communication now you can try right. to speak you know with your broken japanese and gestures and keep a good attitude and for the most part they reciprocate not everybody <laughs> no not but, um, no not everybody you know, no not everybody no <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> some people clearly don't want to be bothered no but, it's, <laughs> it's just like any other place but, um, just because yeah. it's just because yeah, it's, right, yeah they're polite people does not mean they they have stuff to do guys <laughs> they have lives they have yeah, to focus exactly. on a lot of them are really busy Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> They're often very yeah, exhausted from working a long time, too. Oh, you bet. Yeah, the work the work hours in Japan are steep, especially amongst public teachers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so, I, can't, um, I can't even imagine. Well? Yeah. If I might ask, what was your average day yeah, like huh. when you were uh, back when you were actually in the school? Oh, uh, actually, you know, for the most part, ALTs leave tend to leave earlier, like um, around 4.15, uh, at least in Kobe, the official working hours are from 8.30 to 4.15, 4, uh, and people try to like stick by that and leave by that time, and a lot yeah. of LTs are able to, mm -hmm. but yeah, the other Japanese teachers are the ones who are staying there much longer. Of course, of course. And um, yeah, yeah, so that's, I was lucky in that sense. Um, um, but also, oh, speaking about like making friends, Japanese friends, I, I did want to say that, you know, what's really special that not only I experienced, but other ALTs experienced too, is once you like have a friend in the office, um, sometimes they invite you to things. Like one teacher invited me to his home to have a dinner with his wife. Yeah. And it was really nice, you know, you know, being in this other country and not really having a large friend network, but then all, all of a sudden being invited to someone's house and having a nice dinner together mm -hmm. is really nice. And also another teacher took me to a nice um, onsen, a hot spring. Uh, and we, we, yeah, we spent the whole time. There. It was really, yeah. So th those are the kind of experiences, you know, that you remember, right? Absolutely. Those special bonding moments. And they teach you about the culture a bit. You can try new food and so on. Yeah. That's wonderful. I'm really happy to hear yeah. that, that you got that experience. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so. F I see a funny. Are you able to find places where people cut loose that you compare to like a nightclub or a house party? That's an interesting question. <laughs> um, I can I can field this <laughs> one as well if you like, because you know yeah. I lived on the outskirts. Yeah, of Tokyo, please, please, please. Okay, so yes, it is yeah. possible. Um, there is a nightclub scene in Japan, especially if you're in a big city. Um, Kobe would be. Mm of that sort as well yeah, they as have that club. Absolutely. Osaka, uh, Fukuoka, probably Tokyo. No question. I mean, you only have to choose your type of crowd like Shibuya. Forget about it. Mm. I, I did it <laughs> once. And all I can say is, was I'm very much an introvert. That's not my scene. I'd like to go to like a club and drink <laughs> like, like maybe nice alcohol and just like listen to jazz or something. But like a nightclub where you cut some parties, like I went in for like an hour and I was like, I have a headache and I just want to go home and I missed the last train, so I have to sit in a Italian restaurant <laughs> for like four hours until the first one. Uh, oh my god! Oh yeah, dang, that's rough. It is I didn't rough. Know about that experience. Oh, you... was it Saizaria? Saizaria? Uh, no, I think it was a private oh, restaurant that... somewhere right off the scramble. Oh okay. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I was able to, oh, um, I was able, because like, I, I, I helped a friend, because I was like, this is not my scene, and they, I was like, she was, I helped a friend, she was very, very inebriated, right, and 
I was like, mm-hmm. all right. And I explained, hey, can you take her to this location to a taxi cab? And then I was like, now what do I do with myself? All right, there's a there's a there's a restaurant. I know it's open for 24 hours. I'm going to head there and order something and just drink water and eat really slowly until the first train. Got on that first train, <laughs> went to my hotel, and I collapsed until 12 in the middle of the day. <laughs> it was... Oh my goodness, it was my adventure. It was... It was I, that is a great description of it, and it is an adventure, and I'm very happy finished, and I got to my hotel and I slept. How did you compare party yeah, scenes? Yeah, goodness. Yeah. Do you have any crazy stories like that, Charlie? Oh um yeah i i'm probably more like you nick i'm i'm more on the side of not going out and partying too much yeah. i don't know during my high school years in the u.s i did party kind of a lot and i feel like i got that all, of, all out of my system at that time in my life but right. now i am um, trying to go to grad school so i study a lot so i tend to come home and study oh but, that's great what um, are you what are you I, doing grad school for if i might ask oh oh well, i want to do uh economics uh yeah, so I'm studying a lot about that, you know, inequality and like the relationship of economics and society, right, and right. looking for like better alternative models to hopefully reduce some inequality and so on. Yeah. But yeah, I want to study that. Um, but yeah, going out is always fun. I do always enjoy going with friends and so on. I tend to just go to cafes. There's a lot of yeah. great cafes, and you know, oh, talk, absolutely, absolutely. And then um, c- come home before my curfew if i would have one right i don't tend to stay out that late <laughs> right um <laughs> I'm, I'm, but yeah. yeah but i do want to answer your question uh i i did i did uh go out with uh a person i live with i live in like a homestay like situation so there's a a person who owns this house that i live in it's a two-story um house uh-huh. and he went to my middle school we taught to we taught at the same school uh-huh. and um we i live in one of his rooms uh-huh. and i went out with him to a bar Right. And it was really fun. Like, I didn't really know where I was going. He's like, well, let's hang out. And so I was like, okay. And then I just ended up going with him to this, like, you know, secluded, like, corner where there was a bar. And um, <laughs> apparently the, the bartenders there were his, at least one of them was his old student. So that was really interesting. What? All of a sudden I see this person who was that teaches student yeah i was like what well because you know he's like about to retire and oh so okay i was like, was like that makes sense that makes adult. sense right yeah, okay yeah yeah not like a like 15 year old student no it's like a full-grown adult already had right, kids right now they work at this bar um yeah and so that was really funny and i stayed up kind of late you know drinking uh, with him and um and talking with the bartenders and him and and it was really nice. It was a fun time. I, I was like, I could totally see myself doing this more. And so to answer your question, there is a really nice nightlife yeah. um, that exists uh, if you go out and search. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it's nice. It so nice. I think that answers a question that just popped up like a little earlier in the chat of being like, how would you compare party scenes in Japan compared to the U.S.? I think the energy can be the same, <laughs> but there are public yeah. places for it and there's a t- like it has a certain stopping point that's all i can say about it yeah no exactly exactly yeah it's like yeah if you um try to have a party in your apartment then it's going to be a major uh it's called meiwaku like nuisance to everybody around you yes um there's a high expectation to kind of be quiet during certain hours and kind of like not um be a nuisance to anybody yes um yeah, so for the most part, and like, you know, everybody in Japan is pretty much on the same page on that. So it's not like you're going to be I, I invited would, to somebody's I, house I, party I, I if wanna, they live in an apartment or something. I want to agree with you. I want to agree with you so bad. But oh, where yeah? I lived. Oh, it's not that. Um, no, no, no. There is, certainly. Um, but it's funny because I actually, so Tsukuba City, which is where I was, is a mm-hmm. college town. It's where um, Tsukuba oh, University, yeah. which is the former University of Tokyo, uh it was like mm-hmm. a big economic university and like science based and i lived yeah, like i know that one actually yeah. i right because we were talking about it earlier um but mm-hmm. i lived right next to the red light district like literally if i like walked like 20 minutes oh. i could be there and mm-hmm. very nice a lot of great bars and a lot of some sleaze yeah so i <laughs> i saw some things that i don't want to talk about mm-hmm. <laughs> not dangerous <laughs> but just like it's like probably not polite to talk about oh, yeah. them and um uh let's see it's just like it's funny because we also had do you know bozozoku 
Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, bo- the, the motor bike the, guys oh, with yeah. the leather jackets and the motorcycle Papa gang. Door. Those exist yeah. still in Ibaraki, and I swear, in my city, every two to three nights, it would always be at like ten to twelve. <laughs> Going that's right down the main true, highway. Yeah. yeah, that's true. A lot of, a lot of people, specifically, don't like those motorcycle gangs, specifically because they're very loud at late hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. They did not respect the Maywaku of the community. I will say that it was not. Yeah. It was unfortunate. Someone's asking very me openly. Yeah. <laughs> someone's no, no, asking me what I have yeah. seen. It's not that bad. <laughs> what um, have you seen, Nick? I've been to a... Okay, so I've been to a snack club. And if you know what that is, good for you. But I've been to a snack club. And it's fine. I don't know what that is. I just you, think of snacks at oh, the bar. Um, okay, long story short, it is a club where you go in and you pay for the drinks for yourself and for the girls who are sitting with mm. you. And you can be kind of handsy if you can't oh. drift. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah, they have those. So. Yeah. Oh, I see. Not, so, uh, not, it, it, it just, it just felt, it was very awkward for me. I'm very much on a prudish. Oh, really? oh no. Very prudish. So it's like, oh. when I was going through the motions, I was like, this is just not me. Oh. I'm not feeling this at all. This is very oh, awkward. <laughs> Um, uh, that's like a I'm sorry that's a funny situation to like approve at one of those snack bars <laughs> like, it, you know, like, really, it really it really is <laughs> and like <laughs> it was just like come like on Nick you're paying it for him you can you can do the thing it's like yeah, oh my right? gosh this feels so weird and then I like okay <laughs> they're like come on and yeah. stay another hour and I'm like I'm good I'm gonna walk home it's like you sure it's like it's literally <laughs> 10 minutes away and then I can go to bed I'm gonna chug some water so I'm not don't have a migraine the next day oh god oh, no. what an experience uh, man I'll tell you it was very I mean I discovered yeah. like I have a lot of respect for people <laughs> yeah Oh, good. Food. That's really important. It's very important. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'm happy that I have that boundary. But yeah. Yeah, good. No, I respect that. Mm-hmm. Is that absolutely. the worst you've been to? Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't. Deeper. I don't know what to say other than probably. I mean, there's, there's. Pro- Listen, there was probably more sc- scummy places in that area to be sure, and that was one of the lighter things. But you know, mm. there you go. Very strange. Very strange. And wow. what is what's hey, your? I mean, what, you know, there's so many experiences. Yeah. Hmm? What was your whack, like craziest experience having lived in Japan now for four years? Oh, that's a good question. What would it be, huh? Um, nothing on that level. Um, I have the most wacky experience. Or even bizarre. I haven't like had too many wacky experiences or bizarre experiences. I feel like, um, I mean, I went to like a Black Lives Matter protest in Kyoto, but that wasn't really like wacky. It was very controlled, like different right. than you would imagine in the U.S. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but yeah. it was nice to do that. Um, and then let's see. Anything that like stands out, huh? That you wouldn't normally do, right? Yeah, I'm not very. Ex- I'm not a very exciting person. I just kind of study. Um, <laughs> yeah, listen, I wish man, I had better experiences. Not... You know, they taught me ton. <laughs> yeah. Huh? I just read books now, man. I'm very much. I like. <laughs> it's like, oh, if I want to drink, I'll go to the store and I'll get it because it's much cheaper to do that than to go to a bar where there's a strong markup. <laughs> I totally yeah, get yeah, that. There you go, right? Just like it's nice yeah. to be at home. Yeah. Exactly, it's nice to be at home, right? Yeah. It's like, if you were to ask me, it's like I had this crazy night the other day. I bought a bar, I bought a beer at Family Mart and drank it at home until like <laughs> 10 p.m. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not that lame. I'm a, I'm a crazy. Yeah. I had a crazy night. It was uh, just after I got off work, yeah. and me and the buddies, we went to the Family Mart and we cracked a cold one, and then we chopped the shit for 10 minutes before two of them <laughs> yeah. popped the train. And then I walked home and played yeah. YouTube videos <laughs> while eating dinner. 
<laughs> yeah, Ma, eating dinner. <laughs> yeah, it was really intense, man. Yeah. yeah, dude, I get that. That's like <laughs> that was majority of my like life yeah. there. Although every couple of weekends was you know go to Tokyo, have a nice time. <laughs> I'm sure you yeah that's wanted. good that's good you got that experience at least yeah yeah i did go to tokyo um and i did have a good time and it was with a friend where? and i went to yeah where yeah, sorry yes yeah, yeah where, 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 where i went where to you... um the stereotypical tourist spots to uh, tokyo sky tree yeah uh, asakusa right um there's a nice temple over there sensoji and yeah. we stayed at a loft which was nice um mm-hmm. went to um I, oh my gosh i can't believe i forgot the name ikahabara or wait what's that place called you know the electronic place that's Akiha- like akihabara akihabara Aki, akihabara there's two reasons why i know that akihabara okay one yeah i'm a nerd and i love anime so it's like that was like considered the mecca but yeah the thing is is this this the private train line i had to take to get into tokyo the final station was always akihabara that or asakusa oh that's Oh, that's that's cool. Oh, so that's why you're very familiar. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so, yeah, so north the... northeastern wow. Tokyo is very much my jam. That's like where I yeah. like to be. The old city. Um, Akihabara is basically the longer I lived there, I was like, I- I'm good. I guess I come here for karaoke in the city, so it's cheap. <laughs> um, but yeah, huh? <laughs> or I'm going here yeah. so I can go to other places. No! Why do you know that from that game? That's so bad. Why? No! No! Oh, one of the Pearson's ties. Like I know about Akihabara. I remember from this Akiba strip, which is a game where you play a gunner who shoots women and they strip down to because oh. they're killing. De- Very oh. much, it's a Japanese game. If you catch my drift. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. It's also an anime from it, too. Uh, the oh, depths the of knowledge of nerdery. Wow. Akiba's... Tr- well, you know what that <laughs> spells if you take away two of the letters in the space. Yes. No, I know it's Akiba's trip. However. <laughs> don't um, don't, don't worry. Right now. Don't worry. Don't worry, Charlie. Okay. It's all good. This is just, okay, I can't figure it out. I'm messing with Dang. my chat at the moment. It's very just it's so Oh, okay, okay. Anyway, I like the silliness. Yeah. It's very funny. Stop. Oh, why would you even write that in the chat? Um <laughs> Anyway, so um uh, outside of Tokyo, where have you visited? You know, 4 years is very much a long time to be in the country, so I imagine you've gotten around on like some of the uh like Golden Week and what have you. And Obon. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a surprisingly um, boring person. I <laughs> I for Golden Week and so on, I studied the whole time. Can you okay. believe we had like a ten, a ten, yeah, ten uh, consecutive ten day Golden Week because the emperor changed and the holiday switched around, so it I'm... happened to be like consecutive ten day right Golden right. Week. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah, and so I literally stayed at home and studied almost every day. I um I think that was like. Wasn't that during Corona? That was. That um, was. Uh, that was. I, I, I remember that. I that remember was, that right? ten day Golden Week because that was twenty. Yeah. That was twenty twenty. Yeah. Or maybe that was no. That would have been twenty nineteen. I think. When when did when yeah did, I think that was when did the Reiwa Emperor take the yeah. throne? I don't remember. Oh, because that was Reiwa three. I mean, it's the third year, right? Um, so and it's 2021. So yeah, it would be 2019. Yeah, because that'd be the first year in 2020. The second year, 2020 was the third year. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So yeah, as you know that too. Yeah. So I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I went to okay, I went to my grandma's one time because you know I'm half Japanese. She lives in Kanagawa Prefecture in a city called Odawara, and I went there, uh... and um, she has a farm, so I was able to help with her farm. And that was really nice. And that's one of the main reasons I came to Japan to right. reconnect with my family. Right. And so that was really special to me. Um, yeah. So that was probably the best. I, I know a lot of my friends, if you talk to pretty much any other ALT than me who has a more exciting life, they would have traveled to Okinawa or Hokkaido or Korea or different parts of Japan. But yeah. for me, I, I don't 
go too many places. Hey. I'm very familiar with the bread shops in Kobe. <laughs> Odawara you know? is a, from um, what I hear, is a very nice town. I hear they have a very nice castle, and it's nice. Oh fields. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I had a mm-hmm. I had a friend who. Yeah, it is really nice. I had a friend who worked in Odawara. Mm-hmm. That's why. Oh, that's how you know about it. Okay, yeah. ha- have you been there? Uh, I'd like to visit. I, I hear the castle's very nice. And it would be nice to just, you know, both of us were at Tsukuba, so like it's not like farm life and farm towns aren't unfamiliar to either of us. I like, I like walking around the streets of the farm yeah. town, seeing the fields. It's peaceful. Yeah, it is very peaceful. Yeah, I feel like I'm straight out of a uh, Studio Ghibli film. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. and it's good food, too. You know, if you work right, spend a day on the farm, you know, you get a good exercise and then you can eat some really nice like fresh vegetable tempura mm. it's really nice um yeah that yeah i, I enjoyed that. that i enjoyed that that's actually a good question i want yeah. to ask how how is it being mm-hmm. are you a vegetarian or a vegan well i'm a pescatarian you're actually. pescatarian okay so that okay then you can get yeah. by easy i was gonna say how is it yeah there's a... i was gonna say how is it being a vegetarian in Japan, it's like, oh, if you're a pescatarian, oh, you probably oh, okay, but I can speak to that, too, because there's a lot of new ALTs who are vegetarians, who, there are even some who are vegans. Right, and, um, right. Yeah, but for me as a pescatarian, like, because I can eat fish and other types of seafood, yeah, it, it's not too hard. There's usually always something that mm-hmm. is on the menu. Like, if I go to have um, you know, pasta, there's usually, like, a mentaiko pasta mm-hmm. or some kind of uh, seafood pasta. If oh, I go delicious. to have you know, like bone booty, like a rice bowl with the uh, yep. some kind of topping. Yep. Usually meat or other, uh, you know, with like an egg mixed in there, uh, the fried egg mixed in there. Uh, but there's usually like uh, you know fish don't uh, uh, So there's usually a fish option, or like even if I get a burger, <laughs> there's usually like a fish burger. Uh, you know what I mean? Like so, there's always like some kind of fish version. Right. You're <laughs> so, uh, it's pretty easy for me. You're making me so hungry. <laughs> All these foods, you're like, man, taiko. Oh, no. oh, I want a mentaiko rice ball. <laughs> it's like donburi. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I want donburi. <laughs> oh, you're like killing me here, man. It's like the best I have is like subpar ramen and like a sushi yeah. joint and like a teppanyaki. Oh rice. no, it's. Oh, that's okay. I'm definitely going to get Japanese food when I go back to SoCal. That's definitely on the itinerary. Um, so, good question. Uh, good, since we're on yeah. the topic of food, um, what's an yeah. authentic Japanese dessert that is a must try besides mochi? From a from a person in China. Momburan. Mom- it's like momburan is like. Um... Well, I don't know if it's authentic Japanese acts. I mean, it, it is Japanese, but right. I think it originally might have come from outside, but it's used in a lot of places. It, Momburan or right. Momburan is like, um, I believe it comes from chestnuts uh-huh. and um, it's like a paste. Uh-huh. And it is, um, you know, they have it and they squeeze it out. So it comes in like many little tubes, like little tubes come out like, um, right. Maybe you can imagine, like the same uh, thickness of uh, kind of a thick pasta, right. but it, but the texture is more, uh, you know, soft and um, uh, creamy, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, they they tend to like put that on top of a little cake, and so it's covered in this like momburan topping, mm-hmm. and the cake on the inside, you know, it might be some dough with some cream, and that's really good. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of you know, momburan dishes as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you get crepes, there might be a moment around crepe. If you get, um, uh, I, I don't know, it's hard to think, but there are very, very many variations of desserts with the Momburan. I recommend it. Yeah, for myself, I would recommend anything with like Onko. I love Onko. Yeah, very Onko much is so. really good too. I've yeah. like I okay for to be perfectly honest, the first time I had it, I I, I thought it was horrible, 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 horrible. And then I grew to like it, and it became instantly my fa- – it's probably my favorite dish. And it's funny because it's just sweetened red bean paste, and you can put it on anything, and it's yeah. just good. It becomes really good, doesn't it? Yeah, especially the um, – I really like azuki beans as well, um, especially the um, – what is it? It's um, Doraemon's favorite – on uh, pond dessert it's like no no dorayaki no, no. dorayaki oh dorayaki is okay yeah, that's good yeah. that's that's my answer dorayaki yeah it's really good two pancakes 
and then in between the two pancakes is a layer yeah, of, azuki beans. of azuki beans. Yeah. It doesn't. I don't Taste, care if it's smooth yeah. or rough. Actually, I'll be honest. I like it rough when they're actually more fully formed beans because <laughs> it's like got better consistency. It's so yeah. good, which yeah. is like okay. Um, can you spell mombura for our uh, guests? Uh, sorry, mo, mo, Momburan is like a, in Momburan. Romaji or I guess English spelling, it would be M-O-N-B-U-R-A-N. Momburan. That's again, M-O-N-B-U-R-A-N. And I don't know if that has like a different English like translation, but in Japan, that's what it's called. Right. Uh, usually it's in katakana. Yeah. Okay. So, pro- okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, I also like Costella, and I know that's based off of like. Um, oh just, yeah, Costella's, Costella's great. There's so J- Japan has yeah. so many good sweets. So many. It doesn't matter if they're from, it's, like, natively or they just brought it in and made it their own. It they just do sweets good. Exactly, always good. There's yeah. almost too many because it's like hard not to eat them. Hard not to buy. Them. Oh <laughs> yeah, no mean? question. I, um, I, if it wasn't yeah. for the sweets, I probably would have lost more weight living over there. To be perfectly <laughs> right? honest, I was like. I think I'll have some ice cream today. Mm, I think I'll have some Doriaki today. Mm. I think that's where yeah. a lot of my money went. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, that's yeah. fine. I enjoyed myself. That was real. Good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, gosh. Any, um... So... In Kobe, is there any place you'd recommend to people, like, going around? Because usually people don't really talk about... So there's, like, obviously the big three of, like, uh, Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka, right? Mm -hmm. But I think Kobe is also very big... Like, it's a very cool city to visit if you ever do. Anything to recommend if people ever go Mm -hmm. there? Yeah. um, Well, for one, as mentioned earlier, the bread shops, absolutely. There is a um, lot of nice um, tourist spots as well including the there's like a nice herb garden where you can take um a ropeway that goes up to there and and walk around it's really beautiful especially during autumn because you have a koyo all of the um, autumn leaves and um there is you know himeji castle that is um Mm -hmm. a little bit west ways of kobe but it's nice nice place to visit as well Mm -hmm. There is a, you know, e- Ijin Khan, like um, historically significant um, uh, European houses that were created when um, we, they had European folks end up living there through, um, you know, connection with all of the um, exporting and importing right. that Kobe did. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, there is also a Chinatown. I think in Japan, the second largest Chinatown called Nankin Machi which is a nice place to visit as well. There you go. Um, then there's American Park. I can keep going. There's American Park, a very nice big pork park. <laughs> and there's Mosaic next to it, which is it has an incredible view of the port and all these really nice restaurants and even like a Studio Ghibli um, goods store. Uh, so, yeah, I could keep going, but there's like a lot of places. You know, Everything I said you could probably find online. They're not like niche places. Absolutely. It's so funny. I like yeah. Whenever we like, we bring up the fact that you're in Kobe. One of the persons is like, "I'm getting so hungry for Kobe beef." It's like, well, <laughs> Kobe beef is nice, but there are many different types of wagyu, mm. which is Japanese beef. You know, it's not just Kobe. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. so true. Like I hear that um, um, mm. Tohoku has really good beef. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I I wouldn't know. I don't. I don't eat beef, so I'm not so uh, informed about it. As a pescatarian, yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They um, do have... You know, I guess on the note... Yeah. I was just gonna Never mind. You go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, because, you know, this is Kobe. I'm from Kobe. I do hear a lot about it. They do have a lot of places that sell Kobe beef, a lot of different um, qualities of Kobe beef. Right. That, range from different prices you know the more expensive ones tend to be more pricey. um be better but uh, in terms of better i hear that they tend to be more like fatty or like have some more um you know flavor to them right i don't know if that's because they're more fatty um but yeah they're kind of creamy texture mm-hmm. uh, for beef right that's what i hear is kind of a, a big selling point for it right mm-hmm. there you go that's wonderful 
Um, I you know I can, I gotta yeah. say that I mean again that would be for someone who does eat meat. I mean I'd enjoy that, but like that would be just <laughs> like a I do it once and that's a big spend, and then I'm just gonna eat cheap the rest of the time like I always do. You know? <laughs> living living yeah, off one, of a, one dinner for <laughs> living yeah, off of convenience food. Bra. Yeah, so get some family cheeky convenience food. Exactly. You look you look at your um you know credit card expenses. It's like for food you had like what um two two like two hundred dollars worth right like um twenty thousand mon one day for kobe beef and the rest of the time it's like what two thousand yen twenty dollars oh, yeah. a day it's like <laughs> it's oh like, where's the mentaiko roll yeah. i'll just have that for lunch oh where's the where's the yeah. uh, tuna mayonnaise roll Maybe tuna mayonnaise one yeah yeah i know right you, yeah. the tuna mayonnaise uh rice bowl the egg sandwich yes it, it gets pretty like old fast though because when you go to a convenience store they always have the same thing and you kind of know what you like yeah so if you go there a lot you know it's just like i don't know to me it gets old really fast i i agree um, i agree you have to shape it up by yeah. going to like a cafe or like a, a different chain or something like or like yeah. a small shop like one of my favorite places to go to is after work, I'd either go to like the ramen joint, you know, or mm-hmm. right next to it is a, an Indian restaurant. I'd love going to an Indian restaurant every couple of weeks because it's like, oh, yeah, they have some really good ones. Uh, yeah. I, I, I miss Indian food so much. <laughs> like yeah. the good Indian food. I, know, one... I mean, so go ahead. Go mm-hmm. ahead. I was just going to say, because it's interesting, because like in Indian food in this context is like Japanese Indian food, right? Right. And like, I don't know, people have their own opinion. I like, like, actual Indian Indian food, but actually, I don't know how, like, much of an actual Indian food I could have uh, experience at this point right. in my life. I have, like, American Indian food, but um, but then coming to Japan, there's that Japanese Indian food. But right. to me, I really like that. You know, it has its own unique flavor. It's kind of catered more to the Japanese tongue. Um, yeah. I don't know, but I really like that, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the the place mm-hmm. I would go to was staffed by um, a bunch of uh, Bangladeshi. I think the owner was like a Bangladeshi oh. man, his Japanese wife. So it was pretty authentic. Yeah. So, oh. Wow, that's awesome. <sighs> what yeah. I wouldn't give for some naan and uh, some... Uh, this, uh, yeah, it always has the naan, doesn't it? The naan with like that... It's just big. You know, it looked like... Um, it's like a big... Yeah, it's big, big. That big piece of naan. <laughs> yeah. It's like, seriously. And then they have like that little container of the curry, curry. kind of like yeah. can dip the naan in it yep yep yep. and oh yeah i never get tired of that honestly mm. yeah sometimes you get the set where it's like it comes with like some naan and then like the curry maybe you get two types of curry and then there's like uh like kind of like a yogurt with like some drizzle on it maybe a nice little salad oh, with like yeah, a lemony yeah. it was like maybe that's right have it. oh Oh no! This has become a discussion about eating out in Japan and food and restaurants. <laughs> I'm not down. I'm down because I love that. That's one of my favorite parts about living there. Is like the dreams are good. Okay. What, oh. So I got another question. Are you ready for it? Oh yeah. So I'm um, Nick. Sorry. I think uh, my uh, my headphones just died right now, or my earphones just died right now. So now I, there might be some reverb because um, I'm using the computer speaker. Gotcha. Is it okay? Okay. All right. It isn't that bad. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So the question is this. What would you say are good Japanese foods or snacks uh, that you know an American would really go for? So what do you think some like things you find in Japan that American would really like? Okay. Um, okay. K- karaage. K- karaage. Like, um, yeah, definitely. Your fried chicken. And there's like... Um, Yakitori, like uh, grilled fried, chicken. <laughs> grilled chicken. Yeah, grilled chicken. A lot of, yeah, chi- like, a lot of chicken. Fried or grilled. There's a lot of chicken. <laughs> tempura. Tempura, okay. right? Yeah. They have all kinds of like, you know, shrimp tempura, vegetable tempura. Right. Um, and yeah, if, if you like sushi, I know a lot of people don't like raw fish, but that is something that is uh, popular amongst many Americans too. Yeah. And, um, and just like the Japanese versions of everything. Yeah, like um, burgers, Japanese versions of burgers and pasta. Um, I think a lot of Yoshi some, ones some... get used to it, like like kind of like yeah, you Napolitan do. or something. I like Napolitan, yeah. and it's, yeah, it's, it's, I could probably make it from scratch because it's just like oh, what is it? It's ketchup pasta with like <laughs> with with peppers in it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, 
exactly and um but but there are a couple like toppings that you wouldn't expect right yes. like um that mentaiko yeah. for example mentaiko pasta like you never find that in america right? no 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 and yeah and then even having um like mayonnaise on pizza oh um, it, it's surprising it Japanese mayonnaise yeah. is so good, though. I I would put that on. Yeah. I, I don't want to say I put it on everything, but like I put it on a lot of stuff because it's just it's so good. Yeah, no, I love it. And mayonnaise just like takes on a whole different meaning in Japan. Like uh, my oh, yeah, family definitely. in uh, Odawara City, would, for lunch they just have like like mayonnaise on toast. <laughs> <laughs> really? Um, yeah, like a little lunch with coffee and mayonnaise on toast. Maybe you know have some cheese on top, melted. Um, yeah, nice. and for me that was really good too. There you um, go. Yeah. Um, oh, omelet rice. Like omelet oh, rice no is also question. really good. It's a comfort food. Yep. You know, you'd have like some kind of rice that's, you know, sautéed with some meat or vegetables. You, you, they're different flavors, and then it's wrapped around in like an omelet, like an egg. Yep. Um, that's nice and fried, and then you can have a uh, um, ketchup and mayonnaise put on top of that as a topping. And that's also, you know, a staple. Um, a lot of Americans like that as well. Yeah. I think a lot of the breads, too, like where they have, like, breads with stuffing oh. on the inside, like curry pan and all the other stuff yeah. like that. I don't, th- I don't think – I think Americans would like that as well. No, absolutely. If you go to, like, any of those bread shops because they have so many options. Yeah. Like, Americans <laughs> – as an American, I really yeah. like the bread shops. <laughs> yeah. Bread is – yeah. Japan has good bread. That's just a non-starter. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So another question. Um, so a question about teaching. So sorry for sticking with snacks, but I have heard that English teaching in Japan isn't what it's cracked up to be. So that's an interesting mm-hmm. thing because like both of us can answer mm-hmm. that in different perspectives. So yeah. um, do you want me to mm-hmm. tackle this as, with the private yeah. education first or would you like to go ahead yeah, with please, public yes. education? Okay. So yeah. uh, I worked at an Eikaiwa company. Um, mm-hmm. And Eikaiwa companies are designed to train Japanese and probably other places that have it in their model, probably like Korea, uh, mm-hmm. to speak English in a fluent manner because it's not really focused upon more so in the public school system, which is more about, I feel like, mm-hmm. literacy and writing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, you're a mix of a teacher and someone who helps them with proper pronunciation, rote memorization, and discussion skills. And Mm. you sell products. So if Mm. you feel like you can do it in that context, that might be right for you. If you feel like you have a more salesman edge to yourself and are willing to be a more open thing, that's more your speed. That's what an Akaiwa teacher does. Uh, I just was never okay with selling people. You ask sell products, yes. You'd sell products like CDs to help them get listening skills and training of like pronunciation you'd sell them special courses to practice uh phrasings and such very 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 arrayed in its type and basically Mm -hmm. classes Mm -hmm. were 50 minutes ish 45 Mm -hmm. for children Mm -hmm. and you just get them used to phrases through Mm -hmm. specific activities and a course curriculum Mm -hmm. I'm curious, around how many students would normally be present in one of the lessons? Would it be more of a one-on-one type structure? There are one-on-one classes. Those tend to be more expensive. Uh, mm. However, uh, classes can range from one to... Eh, it can even be up to eight people, probably. It depends on the room size you're working in. Mm. Uh, and... Basically, it's you get, usually a day for me would be seven lessons, usually one to two hours of prep, so six to seven lessons or one to two hours of prep, depending on the day, uh, except for mm-hmm. Saturday. Saturday is always... Uh, so the Eikaiwa schedule is very regimented mm-hmm. in that. Uh, mm-hmm. For the Japanese teachers, usually the foreign teachers work from Tuesday to Saturday, and the Japanese teachers maybe have one day in the week they have off, so they don't have that full weekend. Whereas the mm. foreigners usually have uh, Sunday, Monday as a weekend. Oh. Yeah, and the schedule is usually from like 12 to 9 in my company, Monday, no, Tuesday, yeah, Monday through Friday, and then mm. uh, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
Mm. And then obviously an hour for lunch. Um, mm. Yeah, it's if you like a fast paced job, a Kai was good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you ever break? Yeah. Okay, so I, I, is this directed towards me or is this directed towards Charlie? I'm sorry, Charlie. <laughs> Well, no, it's okay. Um, what, I'm sorry, what's the question? So the question is, did you ever break professional teacher facade to talk genuinely with them to get them more comfortable with taking talking without an accent or more casually? Certainly, I did, because I was never mm. the most professional teacher. <laughs> it's just how my attitude towards mm. it was a very, like, jovial and open and i want you to be engaged in my class and i want you to speak as much as you can mm. and get as much as i can mm. oh i really like that yeah i think that's important um yeah I, I would be the same because um you know everybody's gonna make mistakes when they're learning a new language and they're gonna have their accent and you know in english there's so many accents out there um the japanese accent should be acceptable um there's a little, there's a strong push to have it fit the American accent, um, have Japanese students learn how to speak like Americans, but um, that that can put uh, expectation on them. That's a little too difficult when learning a you know ling English, because then they have to think about like their accent while they're thinking about just speaking, which is a lot all at once. But um, yeah, so in order to not like have them worry too much about that, like like Nick, I would also just kind of speak to them more openly and you know, listen to yeah. what they're saying not try to judge if it's correct or not just encourage them to have the confidence to speak English and try out what they know yes I think communication skills and like confidence is like the most important thing because like yeah if you can get your what you want to say across and mm -hmm. if you don't feel too nervous to do it that's the biggest mm -hmm. hurdle those two things yeah no, absolutely yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah, that's a big part of the language acquisition is just you know getting over that uncomfortable feeling of you know um, making mistakes, you know saying it wrong, or you know feeling like you're not doing it right all the time. To get over that feeling is a big hurdle. But once you do, you, you can improve boundlessly because then you have the confidence to just keep trying. Absolutely. Uh, there's just. It's being for your students for the most part and encouraging yeah. them to be just as best as they can. And I think that's what mm -hmm. any good teacher yeah. should do. It doesn't matter if it's English, yeah, right? Or mm -hmm. if it's anything, really. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely, yeah, me too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, should, we, should we talk about, like, um, how it was teaching for you now? Like, how it is in... Yeah. How, how's, how's, how's teaching as an ALT? Yeah, yeah, um, uh, to answer the question, I guess, I think it, what part of the question was asking how, you know, English, being an English teacher in Japan is sold <laughs> to the general public versus how it actually is. And um, it is kind of sold, at least in my image on the JET program, to seem like more of a fun, you know, close to study abroad-like experience where you get to engage with a lot of students um, and travel and get to experience Japanese culture um, while working. That's the kind of image I have, or at least in terms of how it is portrayed when you know, selling the program. But right. um, in reality, I don't think it's quite like that. You, you, it is a full-time job. You have to work hard. You have to you know, you know, pay attention to a lot of things and details and learn a lot of um, you know, ways of working with not just other teachers, but also um, the students and how to effectively you know be a good teacher um, it, it is really difficult and um you know you're full t it's a full-time job so you can't always go travel and you have classes to teach so if you'd want to travel with your friends during the semester but you have classes you, you might not be able to um you'd have to use you know the, the summer break or the winter break to um, have travel time you have um, paid leave too that you can use but you know, it's limited as well. Um, unlike other teaching jobs, like during winter break, summer break, um, spring break, you're expected to go to school, except for like, you know, certain 
exceptions when school is closed, like during New Year's holidays or Golden Week. Um, yeah. You expect it to go to school or use paid leave. Um, <laughs> and even if you go to school and you don't have anything to do and there are no students, you still yes. have to go. <laughs> so, that is true. It's not like, you know, it's not like a study abroad like experience. <laughs> Yeah. It's a job. Yeah, it's old as you know. It's a, it's, a, it's a job. It's a job. Yeah, and so it comes with all of those problems, and you know, like communicating, especially in another country, in a different culture, in a different language, with people you don't know, um, it it can be really challenging, mm -hmm. and and it can really push you out of your comfort zone, and also being put up to the expectation of being like this public role model this teacher to all these students, but not just meeting those Japanese expectations of following rules and, you know, yeah. being like morally correct in whatever definition that they uh, make, but you also have to um, like be a representative of your own country somehow. So yes. there's like a lot of like, and you know, sometimes the, there are conflicting um, expectations because of that, because being a representative of your own country, um, for example, would mean, I'm trying to think of, that you communicate differently, right? You communicate, you might be more direct, but at the same time, you know, in Japan, they have their own communication patterns and you have to accommodate those. You have to understand that their communication isn't always as direct. So, so you might be expected to, you know, kind of be able to communicate more indirectly with Japanese folks at the same time. Um, some other people might expect you to be more direct um, and so that's an example of like the double standard a lot of ALTs can be put up to. Yeah. And it's very similar in the sense of that representation when you're doing um, work at a Kiowa company. Um, mm -hmm. Because you are a representative of a private company and thus it falls upon you to be responsible, especially when you're wearing mm -hmm. the material associated with it. For example, every day I had to mm -hmm. wear a lapel and it was of the company's oh. logo. And if I have that mm -hmm. on, I can't ant act a certain way i have to be relatively mm. professional i have to be relatively on mm. point with things but at mm. the same time once it comes off and i'm on my private time and i'm not representing the company it still behooves me to be a strong representative because i am a representative of my country just as charlie said yeah. so <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if you're working in the yeah. public or the private sector because you're representing <laughs> where you're from and you kind of don't want to yeah, make exactly. an ass of yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and that's that's another thing, right? Like, even if you don't want to like represent this whole country, you're you're not a representation of your whole country. There's so much diversity and variety of people in your own country, but but the exposure these students have to people from your country might just be you. Right? Yes. So like the things you do, the way you are, the though it they can become stereotypes. I don't think it's the best way of thinking. It, it could happen that you know this student might think you know. Um, everybody in your country um, does this, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can't use chopsticks, maybe they think, ah, oh, no one in America can use chopsticks or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. That's the very <laughs> standard viewpoint. All right. So another question he asked is, how do you navigate that cultural difference between like the expectation versus the reality? Probably is what he means. <laughs> that's such a hard it's question really to answer <laughs> oh my gosh and again it's like because we're talking about when we talk about culture and expectations right we're not just talking about that but also personalities and um you know the like other identity identities that come into play right because i'm yes. a man from america in japan who's like light-skinned i'm treated differently um and so it's not just a matter of our differences in culture and i'm also from los angeles which has a different culture in the u.s than other places <laughs> yes it does um yeah so it's it very complicated doesn't it um so it's hard to talk like broadly about this but um i can say for sure that um it, it, one example would be in japan people don't communicate as directly so it can be harder to say no in certain circumstances um in you know more low context cultures like the that in the u.s we can be more direct and you know say no um, when we don't want to do something, <laughs> for the most part. Some people still have difficulty. Um, yeah, so that different, and you might expect, right? You might expect the other person to give you a more clear answer, but in, in the Japanese culture, that giving a clear answer itself 
when it, when the answer is a no, it's something that is hard to do. Yes. So you kind of have to you know pick up on the signs. You know, if they're like, ah, you know, I don't know if we can do that. It might be difficult. Like that's a no for the most. That is part, very right? that's very um, strongly worded no. Actually, if that's what they say yeah. to you, that's like a hard no. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like even when yeah. Sorry, when Nick Nick knows too when you're um, learning Japanese too. Like sometimes when they're like ah choto. <laughs> yeah, if it's a choto, there's so it's like well. Uh, so for example, if someone says yeah. like so in Japanese, they have this term. Uh, kuki o yomu. Can you read the yeah, yeah, air? Yeah. It's like reading the room, feeling the environment. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's an essential skill which if you get down, you'll have a lot of an easier time understanding the cultural context of things. Um, yeah. Like like for example, if I if I don't want to go to something, it's like, yeah, we're going to go uh drinking in uh Shinjuku and we're going to go bar hopping and I feel like I don't really want to go. It's like, ah uh, <laughs> so it's like ah that sounds really fun but i got this errand i gotta do which is like i don't really want to go but you know they can't say like, ah he's busy or which is like you're yeah, kind of like yeah, excusing yeah, yeah. yourself from it yeah yeah exactly yeah they might not just say like you know oh sorry i gotta do this i can't go <laughs> so yeah. they might just be like ah you know i um there's this other thing that I have to do, and and so that can mean no. I, I do know that certain LTs have had trouble with um, that specific cultural difference when they wanted a more clear answer, <laughs> and and you know, yeah. the teacher they work with who's Japanese did not give them the clear answer. They kind of pushed their own desire on them. Like, they want to do it this way. The teacher wasn't able to refuse directly, so then the ALT just did it their way. But the teacher actually was refusing in the Japanese yeah. uh, form of communication. So that became a problem. Um, I talked to the ALT themselves, and they were still adamant that they did not say no. So I, you know, you know, what's their fault? Like, that was kind of the thinking pattern that um, to me is unfortunate because it, it's really it's, a lack of understanding of, you know, and how respect communication for the, works. For culture. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's. I think that's so important, like, and I think that's a great way to segue into something else. Is this understanding yeah. of how different cultures approach different types of, like, interaction styles? Like, mm -hmm. I gotta be honest. Like, having now mm -hmm. been working at least a month and a half in like an American business, like mm -hmm. sometimes I miss that indirectness of Japanese society because <laughs> it's a little oh, yeah. softer and less demanding. <laughs> Like when I get like a person uh -huh. in my face, it's just like, yeah. you are pushing me yeah. so close to wanting to just quit right now. Yeah. <laughs> Can there just oh, be man, a level of hard, politeness? Though. I understand you're frustrated, but do you have to be this blunt? Yeah. There you go. That's the opposite extreme, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a level of entitlement there that adds to that fact on the mm -hmm. part of American consumers that I've hopefully is going yeah. away. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so, so he has another question for us, and I think this is a good one for since both of us are, te you know, this is another education one. Uh, did you ever show yeah. them anything like YouTube videos or anything to give them more of an exposure to different types of Americans? I would say foreigners mm -hmm. in general, but for me, no. Mm -hmm. uh, follow um, the material. If we had an independent course system, we would try and set it up. And I thought of doing one such as that, just it didn't pull through for me. How about yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, for me, yeah, I didn't personally, but um, I do know that, for example, at elementary school, there are YouTube videos to help students practice English, like little song jingles in the beginning that the students can easily sing along um, to that helps mm -hmm. them warm up their English. Um, and yeah, ALTs have used that. Um, at junior high school, school level, um, when ALTs design activities, um, there are cases where they do use some YouTube videos. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, and but particularly at a high school level, at this one high school, Fukiai High School, which is has a unique international program mm -hmm. of, that consists of a lot of high level, um, um, well, how should I say, uh, students who have a high level in English. Um, these these ALTs are able to design their own curriculum. So so if part of the you know for example they're studying like what one ALT is studying um, fast fashion. And they're able to go into more in-depth conversations about this, you know, social issue. Mm -hmm. um, 
in English, and they explain like terms because it, right. students are generally good enough to know the words for the most part. So they explain terms and ideas. Um, you know, like you know, a global warming could be one, but yeah. you can easily tr translate that, couldn't you? Yeah. Um, I don't know that. You know, sweatshops, for example, like sweatshops, and you know, as a person who speaks English, for the most part, you would know what that is. Yes. Um, immediately. And yeah, so but if you know you're not a native English speaker, you'd think sweat. You'd think of the literal words, right? Like sweat shop, and it's like, wait, what does this mean? Yeah. So why do they sell sweat? Teachers, yeah, yeah, right. Like of course, if it's a, you know, well, I don't know if everybody sweats in a shop, but but um, yeah, like they would explain what that term means to the students, and they'd have their own curriculum where they would show like a documentary in fast fashion. So that's an example of you know. Well, not YouTube, but they might use YouTube there. Right. Depending on how much control you have over the curriculum, you could use YouTube. But in general, people follow the like what I think Nick probably had some kind of standard they're supposed to follow in in public education in Japan by the Board of Education. Um, there is like a general, um, you know, curriculum and uh, textbook and certain units and grammar points or phrases you have to cover for very, elementary very, and very junior similar. high school level. Very similar yeah. to Aikai was. Oh. It's just an internal curriculum as opposed to like a public curriculum. Like what the company oh, there is, you go. is yeah. important to focus on. Um, yeah. So this is a, I have another question and it's directed at you, Charlie. I, 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 want, I also want to give it like a feeling. How are you feeling right now? Do you feel like you're still up good for this? Or are you like feeling like you kind of feel like oh, you're yeah, no, down? Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah, I love it. Yeah, we can do a few more questions and then um, I'll probably go eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right, so I cool. I just wanted to like, cause I can. I it's is my Saturday, and it's obviously your Sunday, so I don't want to keep your whole day. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. No worries. Thank you. Of course. Um, so he asks. Uh, so can you explain the role of an ALT a bit more? Oh, <laughs> um, I'm doing trainings on this right now because we have new ALTs each week, and um, I guess if you're come to Japan hypothetically and start your role as an ALT what I'm telling the ALTs coming I have like you know uh, like at least an hour training to cover this whole, whole thing with the whole present PowerPoint presentation so I'm not going to go into that much depth but if I was to summarize some of the main points it would be to um I don't know just like like don't come in with that mindset of looking at how this jet program or I guess being an ALT in Japan is sold of seeing it as like a part two to study abroad. Rather come come into Japan with the mindset of I'm going to be working and this is a serious job. My work will influence a lot of people, a lot of students, the people I work with. It is really important to, you know, you know, be attentive and care about your job and do a good job. Because uh, what I notice is the ALTs who do a really good job are the ones who have a really good experience and feel more fulfilled and um, connect better with their students and their coworkers. And you spend so much time at work that you know that defines a lot of your experience. And if you have a good time at work, when you're out of work, you want to be able to talk in, in a good way about it. You know, talk about the things you enjoy, that things that were impressionable to you, the relationships you're developing. You don't want to have to complain about, you know everything that's happening if it's not going well right you don't want to have to do that outside of work um so a big part of that too is relationships with yeah. um, your co-workers mm -hmm. and finding a balance of how to um work well together and understanding your capacity and how much you can contribute to the class sometimes alts are put in the position where they have to teach the whole class mm -hmm. sometimes they are just a tape recorder they just repeat certain english words and stand in the corner and these are um, examples that we don't want to have happen, but unfortunately do happen. Um, in those cases, how to respond is something that I train ALTs coming um, to Japan in. But you know, communication is the biggest one. If something's not working with you, you have to be able to talk to the main teachers about the situation. If you just flung into class alone, you can talk to them and say, you know, hey, I don't have experience on the job to teach all alone. It's hard for me. I'd appreciate if you could. You know help or do some of the class and maybe I can do an activity um, you know to develop that um, communication uh, you know develop communication I mean you know have that communication with your co-workers um, or if you're just a tape recorded you could say you know I'd rather be able to you know have an activity in the class yeah. where the students can actually practice the grammar that they're learning um, 
you know, I guess just communication, checking with yourself, um, being able to develop the skills to um, say your needs and um, and respect those around you. And a big part of the job is just kind of learning more about yourself and how you are as a person, how you can interact better with other people, I think. Um, and if you look at it like that and are open to making changes um, and making some sacrifices, because there might there will be a lot of things that, you know, don't align with how you are used to living in terms of your cultural norms or your ways of communicating. There are things in Japan that are much different, um, different ways of communication, of cultural norms. These standards you're suddenly thrust against to. And, and there's a lot of room for friction and frustration and misunderstandings that come from that. Um, so just be aware of that and, and try to like, you know, understand these, the difference in culture and communication on a deeper level. So you're not going to let that get to you, not let that frustrate you and try to work around it. Um, these are all, sorry, I'm going off, but like I did a whole training this and I think it's really important to, you know, come to Japan with this, um, understanding so you can have the best experience. Cause I really want ALTs to have the best experience, you know, when they come here. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll stop now. Hey, that's no just, worries. I think that's a wonderful yeah. description of it. Cause it's like, it sets up this realistic, uh, it's a realistic take on what it actually is as opposed to, uh, how would I describe it? Yeah. Uh, how it's marketed, I suppose. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's yeah. more important for like someone who wants to get into it as opposed to someone who's, you know, it's like, oh, it's going to be this grand adventure and it's going to be fan. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, it's going to, it's a job and there's going to be situations <laughs> where it requires you to have communication <laughs> skills and you're going to learn about yourself because you're going to be on your own. Usually, yeah. I mean, most yeah. hires are usually right out of university. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's another big thing. Like right out of university, for me, you know, the longest long term um like work relationships I had, if you would, yes. would be in like group uh project situations. And if it didn't go too well with like one of the students, if there's like a free rider, if you know, me and another student didn't work the best, by the end of the semester, you know, we're we're separate, we're good. We don't have to worry about that. But you know, if you come to work in Japan, you could be working with the same, uh, you know, teacher of English for years. Yeah. And you're going to be teaching together. You're spending a lot of hours together. So, even if it's someone you're not originally going to get along too well with, you have to somehow find a balance to, you know, enjoy your own job, right? Right. Um, yeah. So that's another thing. Absolutely, and I I I hundred percent agree with that. In the terms of, um, I feel like there's more of a shift in the private sector. Because uh, they can usually oh, shift really? Japanese people, the Japanese people who are working with you around, either staff mm -hmm. that are educators or the ones that are running the administrative stuff like office work, like booking appointments yeah. and doing payments and what have you and reaching out to member oh. other yeah. students. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, you got to be able to handle that. You got to be able to yeah. follow the trends and so forth because you got to make it work. Yeah, exactly. You know it. Yeah, that's so cool. I mean, I'm glad to hear your experience about this too, Nick, because we never really got to talk about it even after you did it. No, and I, that's yeah. I'm happy to bring this off because I'm sure it's important to people who, well, listening now or listening into the future to an ep the episode, either in its form on YouTube or when I turn it into yeah. a podcast episode uh, and put it on like Spotify yeah. or something. But I think it's important to address mm -hmm. that. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. I really appreciate this too, Nick, because um, yeah, I'm doing these trainings specifically for the new ALTs coming, so they have a good experience in Kobe. But what I'm saying about the job, I think, applies to, you know, across Japan for yeah. ALTs. I think a lot of it is applicable. So I think it's really important. So to have it on this live platform, hopefully, you know, a lot of people can see it and yeah. you know, come to Japan with that mindset to make them have you know the best uh, alt experience they can absolutely and if you ever want the yeah. information you know you just let me know later on and i'll send you the audio podcast and oh, you can do. send it around and just like hey listen to this section here at this time point and you can really get some in-depth oh, awesome. both and, and it can be to anyone who's interested in teaching yeah. um obviously ours is on japan as an emphasis but like this could be in any country where you're teaching english as a foreign mm -hmm. language yeah, true. It could be, yeah, applicable beyond Japan, huh? Absolutely. Um, yeah. I have another question. 
if you're ready for it. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Do you have a personal? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have a personal example where you were frustrated with a cultural norm that was thrust upon you? Yeah. <laughs> that was a quick a answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's asking for us to vent, so I suppose we shall. A lot vent. of things are thrust upon me. <laughs> yeah, but I, <laughs> I get yes, yes. Oh my gosh. Um, <sighs> what what what, what can be said? There's there's a fair amount. I'm sure. I know, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, hold on a second. Let's see. I guess like I'm thinking of in in the context of school, but it. I, I can do um, one if you want some time to think. Oh yeah, can you go? Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking of an answer. Um, there's a desire for you to look like you're being industrious. Sometimes. Oh yeah. Like That's even if you're just one. messing yeah. around, like yeah, as long as you look mm -hmm. busy. That's very important. Uh, keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's just clean. Um, yeah. So, basically, like, when I would be on some off time and I've got a lot of stuff done and I don't really have to work on anything, um, as, mm -hmm. you know, like, sometimes I'd be on the computer and I finished all my tasks in preparation for the next two weeks. Uh, oh, mm -hmm. Nick, do you have anything to work on? Uh, yeah, let me... Do you need help with anything? It's like, oh, no, we're good. It's like, okay, I'm going to work on something else. But in actuality, I'd just be, like, kind of typing away on the computer, looking around, just, like, on the internet. Which, you know, it's like, <laughs> right? Yeah. But yeah. It's, 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 you have to look like you're serious and you're working on something. And I know this is something that a lot mm -hmm. of ALTs probably have to deal with, I've heard, where you're, like, you're sitting there, you've mm -hmm. prepped everything in a while, and it's like, oh, I'm going to do some studying. And they was like, oh, look at you. You're in the office and you're working hard. You're not really working on something for work i've heard this been yeah, done yeah 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 it's true that's a really good one um yeah yeah because i have the same kind of experience when um when you you know you did all your work and you're just trying to have fun um but it's during working hours you know just talking a little bit here and there yeah um i've had like my supervisors like you know say i'm like slacking off or something yeah or like you know you should get to work or something but it's like you know, I was working the last uh, six hours, got all my work done. <laughs> like, if I just talk a little bit, you know, it shouldn't be a problem, right? Like, so there is that really high expectation of just, like, working all the time. Um, yeah, the, yeah, it can be kind of difficult. De kind of dehumanizing to an extent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And there's also, like, I guess as an ALT, here can be an example. There's... An expectation for you to kind of be Genki all the time. Genki oh. meaning like kind of energetic and yeah. like cheerful for the students and in communicating with the other teachers because there is that stereotype for ALTs. Um, and you know, since you are an English teacher, they want you to be um, having a lot of output, saying a lot of English so that the students are able to absorb more. Um, I guess you know you could be you'd become a more productive. Um, um, you know, working resource for them the more you speak English, <laughs> so yeah. to speak. But yeah, but um, yeah, so there's that expectation. Like, if you're not feeling too good or you're just tired, you taught what, like, five classes and it's the end of the day. Um, and they might be like, ah, oh, Genki Nai Na, meaning like, oh, you don't really seem like you're doing that well. But then to me, I'm like, yeah, of course, I'm tired. <laughs> like, like, just, you know, you just want to be blind. And, just like, Tashka uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I worked my ass <laughs> off, but you can't say yeah, that. Yeah. You can't be that blunt. So you're just yeah, like, right, 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 of course. Yeah. Yes, so and so sensei, uh, but I'll try and chip her up. Or... Yeah, exactly. You have to like, put on that face of like being Genki. So I think that speaks to the Tatemaya culture. Yes. Tatemaya is like, you know, the, the face that you show off to the world, and it, it, whether that's being Genki being energetic and cheerful as an ALT, or whether that's just sh showing that you're working all the time. That's like this tatamaya, this, um, you know, projection of yourself, this image you have to display yes. uh, for, to the outside world. And if you don't do that, you might be told, um, you know, that you're yes. not doing that. <laughs> yes, you don't. And so that you, is you don't show your hone at work. You're very much, you put up yeah, your tatamaya. Yeah. If you did that, you probably, yeah. that's a little much. 
which that's like being kind of your true face, your true self. Yeah. And that's for like that's after it. work or when you're at home or maybe after a couple drinks at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's a good one. That, yeah. Cause like it's that, because in Japanese, they're that tatamaya and that hone, which is meaning the tatamaya is the face you show out to the world. And the hone is like your, how you actually feel, who you actually are. And, and you're supposed to be showing your tatamaya like at work and so on. So it kind of limits you from just kind of being yourself. And it can be harder to kind of just, you know, be your natural self because of that, because of these expectations of how you should be. And so for me, that's, you know, you can imagine because that's every day. Right. It, is, it can be kind of difficult if you, feel, yeah. if you feel like you can't open up. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, kind of that's, I think that speaks to what you said about it being a little dehumanizing. It just like feels like, oh, I can't be honest. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, because like again, on that note, oh, this is good. This is a good conversation because um, you know how like in the U.S. or in other Western cultures, um, being yourself, like finding your own identity, your personality is like a big aspect of the whole culture, and that's yes. very respected in itself as well. Yes. But in Japan, it can be more um, respected, or yeah, respected to kind of fit some standard or like do what's expected. Yes. You know, like you know meet this image instead of like being yourself which is not so much as um for the most part like seen as a virtue i i feel yeah um, i feel like it's gonna get yeah. better because there's a lot of uh, push for individualization and in a lot of like pop culture and like the younger japanese people uh compared to like yeah. the old uh paradigm um and this is just mm -hmm. me studying of my study in japanese society and trends um yeah. and that's good uh, but yeah, there's a reason why there's a phrase in Japanese, uh, the highest nail out of the group gets smacked down by the hammer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah that's why you don't want to stand out. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's that's a whole thing that like I think a lot of places can have, have as well. Uh, but, yeah. you know, it's just it's prominent in Japan. Yeah very proud yeah the, the that pressure to conform is extremely powerful yes um and being a foreigner in japan you already your identity itself is not in conformity with japan you know what i'm saying because <laughs> yeah. like mostly everybody else is, in, is japanese yes like that that um requirement for conforming is already covered but then if you're a foreigner all of a sudden like by definition you're not conforming um yes. so you kind of have to comp compensate that yes um for that in other ways by proving even more that yes you know the culture you are you know respectful to the, these differences and you know i don't know it's like it's it's a lot more work um especially when you're continuously um uh you know told in different ways that you're a foreigner whether that's you know people saying like oh you, your japanese is so good like you know just bring up the topic that you're a foreigner um a lot it and, like, does like, what about your, and you know that doesn't always bother people, but if you you know just want to get around and not be reminded constantly that you're not you're not from here, um, it can you know. Well, it's be like the the word literally yeah. means outside country person. It's like yeah. it's a little yeah. much. It's a little yeah. on the nose. Yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and you're absolutely right. It gets. It's like, okay, this is the fucking seventh time I've had this conversation today. It's like, oh, like it's like, yeah. Da -da 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 -da. It's like oh, yeah. uh, it's like, oh, my yeah, exactly. God. It's like, even if you started the conversation to talk about something else that you would have in commonality, right? Yes. But then they like all of a sudden they bring the conversation to the same topic, like, oh you're good at Japanese. You know I mean? It's like the direction of the conversation just can't continue in like um like a common, you know, casual direction sometimes. Right. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. I feel like maybe it's because they wanna have a level of um distance. Like they can't like there oh, maybe like some like geez. kinda like deep subconscious thing of this person mm -hmm. he just like just the shock of oh my gosh they understand how to speak like me and they are fluent and they understand yeah. but like i have to be able to put some distance in between like that could be something mm -hmm. i feel but then again japan has never been the most pushy of countries when it comes to the it comes to the science of psychology so that's like mm -hmm. it's a very small it's a very late trend to the game oh really oh uh, that <laughs> 
That's a good. Okay, I think this will make you laugh. Man, oh, this okay. gives Agretzko another depth and connection to the culture. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, that's true, isn't it? Gretzka, yeah. That's so you, true. You, okay, yeah. is if anyone ever who watches this or listens to us in the future has worked in Japan, they know ex- a Gretzko has. <laughs> it is my favorite. That is one of my favorite yeah. anime, just because of how relatable it, it is. Yeah. Not just as like so a mid twenties yeah. adult, or you know, both of us <laughs> in our later twenties at this point. But oh yeah. my gosh, it's so on point. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no. I, please watch it if you have it. it. It is. It also like speaks to the Honda and Tatamaya culture too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. That is. Yeah. Very. If you want to learn about that, that's the perfect series for that. No question. <laughs> very excited oh. for the new season to come out in December. Oh, it's coming out in December. Oh yes. Yes. I, I, it's gonna be fun. I'm. I, I think I'm gonna commit a day. And their episodes aren't long. And it's only like eight episodes a They're season. Not. So yeah. I think I'll commit a day to it. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Oh, is there anything else you want to talk about, man? Oh no, I I talked uh, a lot and it was really fun. I feel very um, you know, satisfied with our conversation. I do as well. I do as well. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. All um, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you'd like to uh, plug or like give notice to as like a cause or just kind of be like, hey, yeah, because it's a good time to do Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, if you are thinking of coming to Japan, um, especially as an ALT, yeah, you know, if you could take in mind what I was talking about um, of like what kind of mindset could be beneficial to your experience, then I would be really happy. I'd be really happy. There you go. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Charlie. I really appreciate you joining me for an episode of the podcast. Uh, this has been... Oh, thank you too, Nick. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. This has been the yeah. Guy in a Basement podcast. Um, please be sure to give me a follow and come to future episodes. Um Follow me on social media and the links down below. Check out the YouTube channel if you want to see past archive episodes or if you feel like you want to just get it on the go. I am on a lot of platforms such as Spotify, Podbean, what have you, uh, Anchor. And you can listen to past episodes there in podcast form. Um, With that, uh, anything else you want to add? Oh, no, that's it. Sounds perfect, Nick. Thank you so much for the the podcast. It was really fun. The first time I'm doing one of these. Um, (laughs) It was, yeah, it was a great experience. Thank you. I'm glad to have uh, brought you on then. Thank you very much for giving me your time. I hope everyone has a great rest of their nights, days, wherever you are on the planet, and just have a good one. All right. See you later, everybody. All right. See you later. Take care.